And welcome to the Expert Talks by Calkine TV. I'm Sage. Today's guest is Mr. Ari Trow, the co-founder of XY Oracle Networks. And we're very lucky to have him join us today. Now to give you some background, XY Oracle Network, or you may know it as XYO Network, is a geospatial crypto. And it sounds like an interesting protocol where you can earn crypto by geo mining. And geo mining is a very interesting process described as the act of exploring and discovering digital items or assets from a real physical space. So I'm keen to find out more. Bringing you live today, we have XY Oracle Protocols co-founder, Mr. Ari Trow. Welcome to the show, Ari. Uh, thank you, Sage. Well, let's get started. XYO Protocol had a huge 2021. Congratulations. Can you share with us some of the major factors driving the growth? Oh, definitely. Um, over the last year, we've had a substantial growth in our number of nodes in our system. We've uh, seen more than 4 million nodes to date on the system, which are gathering information from the real world and helping us build this um, reality oracle, as I like to call it. And um, as people become more aware of it by using this, um, these nodes, more into the protocol and the technology behind it, and I think people are uh, liking what they see there. So I think that's driven the, the value and the price of the XYO token as well. Absolutely. It sounds really interesting, the whole process of people coming together, collaborating on this protocol and putting their data up to your um, network. Can you tell us a little bit more about your consensus that you operate within? Uh, it's called Proof of Origin and you mentioned 4 million nodes now. How does this compare with the Proof of Work and Proof of Stake consensus, consensus sorry, that we're more familiar with? Well, um, it's definitely different than the traditional pr um, proof of work or proof of stake. Um, it doesn't, you don't mine um, hashes, for example, like proof of work does, where you have to you know, repeatedly try and get that. So it's very environmentally friendly, the approach that we take. Most of our data is actually um, similar to a non, or to a, um, a zero knowledge proof, where basically the cryptography of it is what makes it solid. And so it's immutable based on the cryptography. So the data collected by the different users does not require any consensus at all. But the answers which are de derived or divined from those, those data points, um, I like to use the term local consensus. It's almost like a jury on a trial where if you get you know, several different people observing the same thing in the real world, then you can actually get a much better idea of how true that statement is. So the consensus of the the nodes that are in the area where they are supposed to be to be able to get this information is um, the important part for our consensus and also what we try and do is make it so that these different nodes aren't aware of each other so if it's you know, three or four parties that are completely independent coming up with an answer if all their answers match the probability of that of that uh, observation of being true is very very high Thank you so much for breaking down quite a complex concept there for us. So according to your website, which is so interesting, I would encourage everyone to take a look at this website as well. We talk a bit more about that soon. According to your website, trust is a characteristic where all parties in a system can reach a consensus on what the canonical truth is, which is in somewhat what you've just said. Now, the definitions of blockchain, trustless and smart contract you provide on your website are great. Can you tell us a little bit more about how blockchains help reduce the need for trust? Well, I would say that um, cryptography is really the backbone for that trust there or trustlessness, should I say where uh, you don't have to trust somebody. The goal is to not have to trust people. So uh, you don't have to have trust. And for example, verifying that somebody reported this, you can verify it with their signature or the, like the sequence of events, you can verify where it is in our proof of origin chain. So it was reported before or after. And you can't remove data from it, for example, because if you do, then there's a, a break in the chain. Mm -hmm. So a blockchain uh, really acts as an audit trail for something. And so the audit trail in this case is the audit trail for the history of the node. And so if a node were to become Byzantine or lie about things, then you'd be able to see that and it can discount their future actions or their future data points that they produce. So um, the proof of origin chains basically act as this, this way of, of uh, making the data permanent where they can basically not change it and they have to actually sign that. And then also we have the bound witnesses where if two or, or more of our nodes actually are in the same place, they can all sign a multi-signature version of a bound witness. So that way uh, they all agree that the data in there is actually true. Great. Now, 
Thank you so much again for sharing that with us. Um, we're really keen to find out about XYO's upcoming projects and the use cases for this data. It's, it's a very unique protocol in, in a sense. Could you tell us a bit more about your use cases and upcoming projects? Oh, well, definitely. So a lot of the use cases are around um, verifying the real things in the real world. That's why the reality oracle is the concept that I've been, um, or the name I've been using for it. Uh, a lot of people think of it as location, but location is just a mapping system really for the, the real world and where things happen there. So, uh, for example, we have a use case where if you want to verify whether or not a person was at a location, you can do that because if the node that's at that location has actually signed the fact that they saw that person there, then you can actually independently verify that that was, that was true. Um, also, for example, we have uh, ad hoc requests where some of our partners want to know things that we don't have data on yet. So we can send some of our nodes to those places. So for example, if you wanna know if a store is still open after COVID, you can send a person there, they can go take a picture of it, they can report their hours. And if you send three or four different individuals, you now have a consensus on what the current status of that real world object is, which in this case is a store. Or for example, product placement in a store. If a person wants to know, you know are my items that I'm selling actually at the end cap where I'm, I'm paying more to have my items, they can have individuals go in there and they can check to see if that's the case and um, they can provide them real, real, real data. And then that data can be used either on a web two or like a traditional uh, backend, or it can be used in a smart contract to activate uh, um, an outcome. Okay, look, thank you. I think I'm starting to understand a little bit more about how, how your protocol fits in with the infrastructure uh, of the business infrastructure, sorry. So are you sort of like a Google Earth? I worked for Yelp for a while and I did some um, data um, stacking on their, on their site. Can you tell us a little bit more about how Coin um, operates in the space or the sector with Google? Are you, are you comparable to Google Earth? I would not say we're, we're uh, comparable to Google Earth. We're probably more comparable to uh, Mechanical Turk, if you've heard of Mechanical Turk yes, from Amazon, where basically it's little micro tasks and you say, well, I want a person to do this or people to do that. And right. it could be as simple as translation, for example. And so it's it's kind of similar to Mechanical Turk, but we're asking people to do things in the real world or gather data from the real world. And so Coin actually is uh, one of our front ends. And that's a, a big way that we have people using our our system and uh, they make their phones into nodes. And there's basically, there's some passive data collection from there where, you know, where the phone goes and if the person approves that they can, you know, can use it at their location. And there's also active data co collection where we ask a person to do something, take a picture of where you're at or go and scan a barcode or those sorts of things. So I'd say we're more uh, a micro, micro task system, kind of like, mm -hmm. uh, like Mechanical Turk, but even on a smaller scale because people might be getting paid, you know, a few cents for this or a few cents for that, but then right. it adds up over time and some of it's automated. Well, that sounds great. It sounds like a way that people can get involved even without having the high level knowledge that you usually need to collaborate on a crypto project. So that's great. And your coin market cap ranking is quite high. It's in the top 200. Uh, this morning I checked and you were at 178, according to coin market cap data. Um, so sounds like there's a bit of traction uh, following along your protocol. Can you tell us more about the coin app perhaps and the associated merchandise? Is this available globally and does this mean that people are mining crypto from their mobile phones? Um, well, the coin app is glo uh, available globally for the most part. There's obviously some regions where uh, uh, Apple and Google does not allow the app to be installed. So um, with exceptions of those, it's available everywhere. Uh, depending on the region in the world, there are certain uh, types of, of tasks or certain types of data which are possible in, in certain areas. There's not partners paying for those. So those might not be possible there, but it is available everywhere. Um, it, it's a, as you said before, it coins a great way for people to start getting involved in crypto without having to go and, and you know, take their bank account and pay and buy some crypto and speculate on it. So they can basically you know, do these tasks, have their phone you know, do some work for them and they make small amounts of crypto and they can get that with uh, minimal minimal uh, effort on their side and practically no cost. All they have to do is open up a Coinbase account to transfer it there. So um, you know, really what, what the Coin app is for us, is a way to make using our nodes fun. Uh, it also, it's, it's kind of game like, we don't want to make it you know, too much of a game, but it, it makes it so that it's you have like weekly weekly goals and those sorts of things as well and so it's somewhere between you know a game an exercise system also helps people walk like you can choose if you want to be you know a driving or a walking you know what type of node do you want to be uh, to optimize which offers you get um, but for people you know, anywhere in the world you know they can basically get involved in crypto and start with crypto 
um, was just using this app and being able to get some actual real crypto from us. That's fantastic to hear. It so does sound incredibly fun from what you're saying as well. Now, thanks so much for joining us today. We have to start winding up the discussion. Could you help us by perhaps sharing some information with us, your website and where people can buy XYO if they're interested? Sure, sure. Yeah, so the main website for XYO is xyo.network. And the main website for coin or the coin app is coinapp.co. So that's uh, C-O-I-N. App.co, and um, also if you just search for the Coin App on the App Store or Play Store, you can find them there as well. Um, as far as purchasing it goes, it's on many exchanges right now. You can go to Coinbase, you can go to uh, KuCoin. There's um, you know, the majority of the of the main um, exchanges out there carry it, and you can buy it on there. I think even some of the DeFi ones, you can, you know, you can get it on um, Uniswap and those sorts of sites as well. Uh, we don't sell Coin, or sorry, we don't sell XYO directly. Uh, we just basically uh, let people redeem. Uh, from the app for it. So we basically give away XYO. We don't sell it ourselves. But if you want to buy it, you have to go to the exchanges. Thank you so much. And you know the media loves NFTs. Before we go, is there any plans for XYO to expand in NFTs at all? Well, we do have a um, an NFT system that we launched uh, about, I think it was almost two years ago now, called XYO World. And the idea is um, the NFTs are different locations in the world. Uh, that system, you know, it went through a process where people bought a bunch of these NFTs and we're integrating that into coin where people can show little messages in coin from the NFTs that they own. So we actually have an NFT system. Um, we are looking at you know, converting that NFT system to using a layer two for the back end of it because um, the, the cost of actually doing transactions for those NFTs are so um, prohibitive right now with the cost of Ethereum and gas that uh, for a person to buy or to tra trade those um, those NFTs is yeah, 50 to $100. And so uh, we're definitely looking at how we can uh, loosen up the, the the activity in our NFT system. But we definitely are a big supporter of NFTs and we have that system there and how we integrate that with coin and the, the experience of our reality oracle is uh, something which we're constantly uh, working on. Yes, so true. The congestion in chains is definitely something that's hopefully going to be solved soon. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Really do appreciate the time you shared with us. Thank you again. Well, thank you very much. And if you just joined us, we had a very informative discussion with Mr. Ari Tro, who's the co-founder at XY Oracle Network. Do check out his website and the full recording via Kalkine Media's YouTube channel. And keep watching for more of these live expert talks and market updates. Until the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Kalkine.